welcome to Woman Power. I'm your host, Lorna Grayling, and today we have a very, very special guest, Lauren Wallier. She was diagnosed with cerebral palsy at the age of 12 months, but she had a dream to be a dancer, something that she never thought would be possible. But today, Lauren, you're sitting here. You are a phenomenal dancer. Welcome and thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. It's such an honor and a pleasure. Lauren, your story is so, so inspiring. I know I spoke to your granddad, actually, and he is your biggest promoter, I have to say. He just loves you and he believes in you. How does it feel to have family and friends around you that loves you and believe in you so much? I think it really is the key to everything I've achieved mm -hmm. in my life yeah. because they paved the way for my outlook mm -hmm. in life. I had my, my two parents, um, but then beyond that, as you said, yeah. my grandpa, but my also my entire extended family, mm -hmm. just having that, that drive um, and that will to support me uh, through anything and everything literally from before I was born yeah. to now and in the future yeah. and I don't think I literally know I want to be sitting here talking to you <laughs> without that support yeah. um, so I can't even begin to describe how grateful I am mm -hmm. because I know I would be a completely different person um, without those um, links yeah, to absolutely. my chain absolutely. of support. Mm -hmm. They really are my foundation. I can imagine. Lauren, cerebral palsy, a lot of people don't actually know exactly what that is and how limiting that is to one's life. Tell us a little bit about it and what are some of your daily struggles? So the challenging thing about cerebral palsy or CP is it's so different for mm -hmm. everyone that's diagnosed. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a cookie cutter disability. Mm -hmm. There's a million different types of cookies yeah. and a million different flavors with a million different colors. Mm -hmm. So it's um, very challenging, I think, mm -hmm. for people to understand mm -hmm. because it's not clear, oh. right? It's person dependent, mm -hmm. um, but it's the number one motor disability okay. found in children, which it's insane that mm -hmm. you can correlate those two things, mm -hmm. right? That it's so common mm -hmm. and yet, like you said, no one knows about it. Yeah. I think the most common misconception is that it's contagious, really? like a cold, mm -hmm. but it's, it's not contagious. <laughs> um, people, do people really think that? Yes. Yeah. So is that something you were struggling with as a child growing up with friends and things like that? I remember friends of friends sure. would ask me if it was contagious. Oh my God. Um, and then I think just the perception if you're in a wheelchair, mm. that you're not intelligent. Sure. Um, and then if you use any type of physical aid, um, mm. that you're not capable to achieve certain things. Yeah, and you have shown the complete opposite. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> I was watching a video of you dancing the swan, right? I got I was just I just wanted to cry because I think when we think of a general day and I mean a lot of people these days are really struggling with emotional wellness and health issues in terms of emotional health right and they have complete um, average lives they are capable of getting up without any pain of putting their hands wherever they wanted and, and those kind of things but you shine and radiate this positivity and this joy and this energy and yet your every day is a struggle everything you want to do is is a thousand times more difficult and like you say you also have to 
um, go against the thinking of, of general people out there. Like some people think it's contagious and, and you know that you're not that intelligent. So how do you do it? What motivates you to get up in the morning and do what you do? Wow, that is a really phenomenal question. Um, I think it's a generational, um, it's a generational kind of intuition of this, this drive mm -hmm. and this fight. Um, I come from a long line of really hard workers mm -hmm. on both sides of my family. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very innate mm -hmm. in some ways. Um, but my parents were really conscious in raising me not to be a victim I love that. to my circumstances wow. and to go in the other direction mm -hmm. and to rise above. Um, and so I think, you know, I do struggle, mm -hmm. but it's not so much from the CP anymore as it is from other health circumstances. Um, and so I think, you know, I look at what my mom went through this last year with her breast cancer and how my parents had to divide and conquer. So talking about woman power, like my mom, I think is the greatest definition of what that is. So I just hope that, you know, every day, um, when I wake up, I can do Oh my gosh, that is so beautiful. I just love that. And that just to have that inspiration, right, with your mom and, and just that people around you. And you are doing exactly just that. You are taking your life and you are inspiring thousands, literally thousands of people out there. I love what you were saying about the choice not to be a victim, because I think that is the profound starting point for any person really, right, in their days. And I think that's why a lot of people struggle with mental health, even though physically they, there's nothing wrong with them, is they don't realize that they have that choice to choose. But you, you did, you chose, and you chose to conquer. I know in your bio at the age of 12, you discovered a very profound um, physical therapy that really helped you. Tell us about that and, and what did they do to help you? I would not be the person I am today without that therapy. It's called mm -hmm. the first step. But truly I would not be mm -hmm. the person sitting in front of you without that therapy. Mm -hmm. um, it's called the first step physical therapy. Mm -hmm. And they are the most proactive, mm -hmm. uh, group I have ever worked with. Amazing. So for how many years did you have to have intense physical therapy to be able to dance that the way that you are dancing right now? So I've been with them for 10 years, mm. but I started dancing five years ago. Really? Only five years? Five years, yeah. And you are dancing like that? That is incredible. That is amazing. It, um, it took a lot of a lot of grit mm -hmm. and a lot of putting my nose to the grindstone mm -hmm. and really just training like an Olympic athlete. Mm -hmm. The former owner who evaluated me said that it would be the hardest thing I'd ever do in my entire life. Really? And that um from that moment forward, I'd be training like an Olympic athlete. Goodness. And my 12-year-old self had no idea yeah, right. what that meant. Um, but I quickly learned. Uh, and um, that analogy really rang true. Yeah. Um, but without that, I wouldn't be dancing the way that I'm dancing yeah. today. So it's truly remarkable. You're also a public speaker. I mean, that is incredible. It's like everything you put your mind to, 
you just decide and you conquer. Obviously, like you're saying now, by working so hard, the same amount of work that an Olympic athlete would put into um, their sport, you are exactly that, putting that into and, and just to accomplish things that others might just take for granted, right? That is absolutely extraordinary. So public speaking, how did you get into that and why? What is your reason for it? It honestly all is connected. Yeah. Uh, when I was 12, my mom took me to the Center of Disease Control, the CDC, mm -hmm. here in Atlanta. She was on a roll and nothing was gonna stop her from taking me to this conference that highlighted successful adults with cerebral palsy. Wow. And there isn't a lot um, that's forward thinking for people with cerebral palsy in terms of um, educating like that mm -hmm. and enlightening what your future could be. So I think she saw that as a um, pivotal a need for me in order to successfully, uh, how do I want to say it, go forward with the future that yeah. I was so desperately wanting. Yeah, and just to inspire others right around yes. you because I think for, for anyone out there is just to see you conquer what you are conquering it's got to mean something in their general days and just bring that incredible amount of hope and to say, right, this is what I've done, you know, and you can too. And that is extremely profound. I know you've got a charity organization as well, a nonprofit. Tell us about that and how can people get involved? So going back to the CDC, yeah. we arrived and we just sat and listened to various people speak and I remember looking around this this huge boardroom and seeing all these uh, children I think it was children and then people in the medical profession at the time um, looking around and seeing them and thinking that there had to be something more to help there had to be something greater mm -hmm. uh, to help these 27 million people. Goodness, is living. that how many people struggle yes. with cerebral palsy? Yes. People don't know that. That no. is an incredible amount. It is a wow. gobsmacking it is. amount. It really is. Oh, that's shocking. And so, exactly. So yeah. I just, I sat there and I think I was just, completely taken aback mm. looking at all these different people at all these different ability mm. points mm. with their diagnosis mm. and I thought there has to be something yeah. more yeah. right and I just started see uh, going to first step physical therapy mm. so you were 12 yes oh my god yeah so that kind of was the catalyst not only for um, first step but for public speaking and mm. for um, what I wanted to do in terms of giving back with the foundation so that was really the driving point mm. with um, thinking about how if I don't do something now mm. there won't be a future and so that was a huge um, inspiration um, data point yeah. for me. Um, in terms that is profound that at the age of 12, you already had this drive, right, to use your life and who you are um, to give back and, and to, to make a, um, yeah, people understand and give hope and, and just give meaning to life. Is that something that helps you as well uh, in your day just to, to get through your day? Is that when you know you are bringing hope to others, does it make it easier for you on your journey? I don't know if it makes it easier, but I think it gives a sense of purpose. Purpose, right. Um, mm. I think what makes it easier mm. is looking at the people that are an inspiration to me, disability or not, mm -hmm. and 
embracing the outlook that they have yeah. um, and using that as a source of um, energy and a source of uh, meaning yeah. to get through my day. And who does inspire you? Who is your inspiration? So many people. <laughs> so many people. Um, I think so many people in different ways. Mm. Um, I think anyone that has the um, mindset yeah. to give kindness mm. and acceptance and inclusion mm. and really extend that to myself and to others. Mm. So I think sometimes it's as simple as taking a step back and observing the world around me and the environment around me and seeing someone open a door for someone else or give someone a genuine compliment mm -hmm. or seeing how someone can positively interact with their family. Mm -hmm. um, we were at a restaurant yesterday and this uh, daughter and her son-in-law were taking care of her mother and I just thought that was such a, a beautiful sentiment yeah. because you don't have to do that right like mm -hmm. I know plenty of people that maybe want to extend that kindness yeah. right and I just it just touched me really deeply because um, it's going outside of yourself Mm -hmm. and going um, into this greater this greater sense of giving to others yeah so powerful right just that little bit of kindness I always find in my own life when I when I give to others it's almost like it enriches me more than what I've given it like you say it gives purpose right it just gives that purpose that is so profound I absolutely love that Lauren, you wrote the most beautiful book. I want to just touch on that. I mean, this is incredible. This is your book. Did you write it? And who did the art inside? Is it also you? Or how did this book come about? This is the story of your life, right? So it's the story of my, so it's my life mixed with my relationship and friendship with my dance partner. Oh. So it touches on all those themes, kindness, acceptance, mm -hmm. inclusion, um, hard work, and dreams coming true. Mm -hmm. And how really, if, if you adapt those mindsets, mm -hmm. that that's, to me, what can give you the tools. Yeah to reach your dreams, oh, but yeah. ballroom is a, it's a couple sport, it's a team sport, yeah. so I want to be anywhere without my dance partner. I wanted to ask you about your dancing partner, so how did you guys meet and how did this relationship come to pass? Because this is a phenomenal relationship between the two of you and, and for him as well to, to dance with you, I mean it's so special, but this must have been really a profound meeting. It was probably one of the most um, transformative points of my life. Yeah. They say that the simplest act yeah. or the simplest phrase that you share with another person mm -hmm. can change your life. And that's truly what he did for me, but I think what we did for each other. Wow. Um, so Mayo Allen and is my dance partner and he's one of the best uh, and most sought after dancers in the ballroom industry. Oh really? Wow. Yes, yes, yes. And on top of that he's just the most beautiful, kind soul. Um, and he actually has a sister with a disability called Angelman Syndrome, which presents a lot like cerebral palsy. Okay. So, funnily enough, we had a mutual friend, uh, and she was taking lessons from him at the time. And 
she had put like a little little bug in his ear. She had grabbed his his ear just a little bit, <laughs> saying that there was a um, a girl in um, Atlanta where she had lived yeah. that was you know inspired and a fan yeah. and just completely taken with his dancing and that I had cerebral palsy. Mm -hmm. um, right, so not much of a of an intro, but just enough to get his attention. Yeah. And then he reached out to me via Facebook Messenger uh, in the middle of my uh, homeschool math class. Yeah. And I was uh, down in the basement with my tutor. He sends me this message, and I couldn't really run at the time yeah <laughs> but i did the best i could to like fly up the stairs first <laughs> open the door and like just get my mom's attention in the most childish <laughs> way um, and just say mom mom mayo allen and wants to dance with me oh my god he wants me to come to new york how do i go to new york so, um, so i ended up going for my 18th birthday. Wow. And I truly thought I would never see him again. Wow. But little did I know, he was, I guess, prepping me and kind of interviewing me uh, and auditioning me wow. to be one of his students. Oh, my and I had no clue. I lived completely in the moment. I was so thankful for this opportunity and I never thought I would see him again so I was just soaking up every moment but little did I know he was planning for something much bigger. Lauren I saw the dance I saw you guys together and it was it's so phenomenal how long did you train to be able to do that? Well honestly I there was so much more that went into it than just the actual building of the routine mm. and getting to know my partner. Mm. Um, I started my therapy program first at physical therapy. Yes. I started in a wheelchair mm. and then I went from a wheelchair to a walker, to a one arm crutch, to a one point cane, to no assistive device, to ballroom dancing. and That is incredible. <laughs> It's quite the um, yeah, and that's the part that you were saying that 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 you literally had to train like an Olympic athlete to get yes. from the wheelchair to the walker, yeah, and then from there on just to walk without anything, yeah. and then from there to be able to dance. I mean, the strength that you portray is phenomenal. So, how many did that did that happen over a few years, or how did? That happened over a lot of years. A lot of years. A lot of waking up when your muscles are tired, yes. right? And a lot of persevering when you don't feel like it, yes. I can imagine. Yes. Yeah. And what kept you going through those times? Because that's a time when you're, you're in a wheelchair. This is where you want to be. I want to dance. But now, like, it's years to get from here to here. What is your secret? How did you persevere through all those moments? I think uh, something that they did really well mm -hmm. uh, within my recovery, if you want to call it that, mm -hmm. in my journey, is they were um, really celebratory mm -hmm. for each milestone. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really important to, to recognize your progress along the way. Oh, that's special. Um, yeah. But to also know and keep in mind what I wanted in the future. Yeah. I want it even more than the dancing. Mm. I wanted to be as independent mm. as I could be. Yeah. So that my my mind mm. um, and the hopes that I had conjured up, you know, living on my own, mm. um, carrying my children. Mm. You know, being able to to walk through the airport with mm. with one child in the baby born and one child in the stroller and um, my suitcase. That's I, amazing. Um, to keep that in the forefront yeah. and to know um, that 
you know, one day. It's that whole, mm -hmm. not someday, yeah, but one, one day. One day. I love that. And to have that vision right in front of you the whole time. And I, I think that. it's having my mind mm -hmm. with all those dreams, mm -hmm. having my body uh, keep up with my mind. Well, that is it from me, Lorna Grayling and Woman Power. If you would like to get involved in Lauren's nonprofit, take a look on the screen right now. The details will be on there. Until next week, goodbye. Uh -huh.